Hi folks, having trouble sleeping? There are three factors that affect sleep. Three levers that you can pull to affect sleep. We're gonna get into that. Okay, three sleep levers. Yes. All right, let's do it, let's do it. Okay, so we've got heaps of stuff on sleep on our website, so check it out, but we've distilled it down, okay, to make it simple as we can. Okay? Yes, and actionable. And actionable, thank you. Okay. Adenosine is a compound that builds up in the brain, mm -hmm. okay? The longer you're awake, the more of it that builds up, okay? When you go to sleep, you, get, you, you, you break it down, you don't form as much of it, okay? As it builds up, you feel tired, yep. okay? So there are, we, can, we can work this lever, okay, to help us sleep, all right? The way you do it is, if you get up early, Mm -hmm. Okay, you start making, you start accumulating adenosine early in the day. Mm -hmm. All right, and as your day goes through, you accumulate more and more. The other thing that can make a really big impact, okay, is physical exercise. Yep. Okay, um, again, you know, when you've had a big day of exercise, oh, you feel tired. This is the reason why. Does this have to be specifically like high intensity cardio exercise? Because I'm guessing Pilates isn't going to have the same impact as a 5K run on adenosine. Look, I, I don't exactly know. Okay, but what I would say is the more you do, the more you're going to build up. The more strenuous it is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the thing of it is, you know, maybe maybe you can exercise for an hour, but you can't exercise for nine hours, right? So whatever you can do is, is going to help. All okay. right. Okay, so that's our, that's our adenosine lever. Okay, now... Yep. Caffeine plays a part in this too. Mm, nice one. Because nice caffeine one. is an adenosine blocker, so the more caffeine you have, the less effect of the adenosine you experience, hence the less tiredness you experience, which at 9 o'clock in the morning is helpful, but 9 o'clock at night is not helpful. Yep. So caffeine is kind of how will influence how you can pull this lever to influence sleep. You don't want to take caffeine after midday, really. Yeah. Okay. Last at least six hours. It doesn't feel like it, but it, that's how long it can sort of interfere with sort of sleep promoting effects. Okay. So I'm all for people having, you know, a good bit of coffee in the morning. Yes. All right. The other thing is because when it wears off, you get a bit of a caffeine yes. crash and that's the other thing hitting you all at once. Okay. That's fine if you want to get to sleep. No problem. Yep. All right. So top load your caffeine early in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, why not? <laughs> okay, all right. Now, the next thing is, why can't people get to sleep? Okay, so, you, so let's say you're plenty tired, but you can't fall asleep. Mm -hmm. The most common reason is what? Head's too full. Head's too full, worries, thoughts, mm -hmm. ruminations, keeping us awake, mm -hmm. okay? The more serious stuff you've got on your mind, okay, the more noradrenaline is floating around in your yeah. system, okay? And that increases your arousal, all right? Keeps you awake. Yes. All right. Yeah. So what do we do about that? Well, you've got to deal with the stuff that's going on inside your head so that your head can settle so you can get to sleep. Nice. Clear your head before bed, if you will. Clear your head before bed. That's exactly right. So that's another clip. We'll put a link up to it. And right? we've got the handout for that one too. Yeah. Generally speaking, it's the stuff that we don't want to address that we keep on sort of pushing into the I don't want to think about it now category. That's the stuff that keeps you awake when you're trying to sleep. Okay. You might be able to distract yourself of Netflix or whatever, but once you wake up in the middle of the night, bing, there it is waiting for you. Okay. So you want to get rid of that stuff. Okay, you want to deal with it. So the four buckets, another clip that we've hopefully will have up by the time this one's up. Mm -hmm. Okay, four buckets and clear your head before bed are germane to this. Okay, now I guess the other thing you could do is take some substances. Yes. Okay, what's the downside there, do you think? Well, you've got to pay back the consequences of that one because if you take tamazepam to get you to sleep, eh, it'll work for what, four hours? And then most people wake up after that and feel the need to have to have another dose, yeah. which is dangerous territory. And we've got videos on benzos and how they work. Yeah. Or if people are using alcohol, it metabolizes while they're sleeping, so they'll wake up from that. So yeah. most of the stuff designed to decrease your arousal so you can get to sleep will actually cause you more problems later if you're relying on this. Yeah. Yep, exactly, exactly. So really the only solution to here is to solve the problem, well, to articulate okay, yeah. what the problems are and then do some sort of step towards solving that. You don't necessarily, if it's a really complicated problem, you're not gonna solve it tonight, but at least identify what it is and figure out what the next action is. Yeah, sometimes a process of kind of journaling is just a way of kind of, I find that if I've got something playing in my head and I write it down, it's almost like my brain goes, oh, I don't need to kind of remember that right now because the piece of paper is remembering yeah, it for me. Nice. So it's like I can kind of do a data dump before bedtime if my head's churning too much. Nice, I like it, all right. Last lever, melatonin, mm -hmm. okay? So melatonin is a, a neurochemical that is cued by darkness, okay? Mm -hmm. So the idea here is if you spend, the way we're supposed to be is we're supposed to spend all our time outside in the bright light, okay? And then sun goes down, okay? We're not a lot of lighting 
around back in the day, mm -hmm. maybe a campfire, mm -hmm. okay? And when that, that light transition to darkness occurs or soft light occurs, that signals the formation of melatonin, Yeah. all right? And that is what gets us prepared for sleep. It gets all the sort of, all the metabolic processes and things all kind of geared towards sleep, yeah. okay? So it's not necessarily sedating per se, it just facilitates sleep. Yeah, so I talk about it with my patients of like, it's like melatonin is like the night shift coming in, getting ready to do the work that kind of happens during sleep, but it's not the thing that actually puts you to sleep. That's adenosine. Yeah. So people who are taking melatonin tablets saying, oh, it's not making me fall asleep. Well, melatonin doesn't put you to sleep. Melatonin gets you ready for sleep. Adenosine puts you to yeah, sleep. Yeah, nice, nice. Um, so the thing with light exposure here, yeah. okay, um, we tend to live in this sort of perpetual indoor twilight. Okay, so you go from working inside in your office, okay, to going home to having the place pretty illuminated mm -hmm. at night, to all of a sudden click, lights go off at bedtime, all right? You haven't had an opportunity for the adenosine yeah. to, to sort of start to kick in yet, okay? So yeah. probably it's going to take a good hour or so of getting to bed before that happens. So you know, it makes for a potentially lousy night's sleep. So having your place dimly lit at night, sort of, you know, soft, warm lighting, yeah, and think on. about it kind of, the, one of the things that cues the brain is the orange colours of sunset. Yeah. So then make sure whatever light exposure you have in the evening is as orange as you can get it. Salt lamps are good. Pick your kind of warm white, low kind of glow sort of lamp globes and things like that. Dimmer switches on the overhead lights if you've got access to them. Yeah, you're sort of emulating a little fire like candlelight or something. Or, yeah. or turn the lights off and just light some candles. Yeah, it's nice. going to work even better. <laughs> nice. All right, and then I guess lastly, sort of back to substances, okay? So as we alluded to before, this is what mostly people tend to go to if they're having trouble sleeping, okay? Yep. Means that they're not getting to deal with the thoughts, so problems accumulate, Yes. okay? Substances will usually knock you out, okay? But the problem is when they wear off, being you have a really broken sleep. Alcohol is a classic for that. Yes. People will crash out in front of the TV after having their alcohol, okay? But then two o'clock in the morning, it's a really light, broken, kind of crappy sleep. Yeah. Okay, especially as you get older. Yeah. Okie dokie. Um, what else on substances? I think that's probably, for our brief talk, brief enough. Yeah, 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 okay. So then three things that you have control over that you can modify in order to improve your sleep. And then one thing, I mean, you've also got a lot of control over this, but it's kind of more of these ones and less of that one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Exactly. Lovely. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next time. Thanks, folks.